Good morning. Welcome to Olympia Brown Unitarian Universalist Church. My name is Jen Simpkins. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'll be your worship associate for today. It is a joy to be together. Our mission as a church is to be a community of hope, challenging us to transform ourselves, promote love and justice, and shepherd our planet. You are welcome here. You are welcome in this co-created and shared sacred space. One of the promises, the commitments of our faith tradition is to create this space where all of you is welcome. It is good to be together. We could begin our service with a shared ritual by lighting our chalice, the symbol of the Unitarian Universalist faith. Our words this morning are from the Reverend Sarah Lambert. The element of fire represents passion, veracity, authenticity, and vitality. If the chalice is the supporting structure of Unitarian Universalism, then we are the flame. We are the flame, fanned strong by our passion for freedom and our yearning for truth-telling are daring to be authentic with one another and the vitality we sustain in our meeting together. In all of this, there is love. If you will now rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing hymn number 95 in the gray hymnal, there is more love somewhere. And now it's time for the message for all ages. So if all the children and those young at heart can run up here like I just saw, or not, no running. <laughs> it's nice to see you all excited. The story that I'm gonna read this morning is called I Am Me, a Book of Authenticity by Susan Verde, art by Peter H. Reynolds, who is one of my favorite children's authors, Peter H. Reynolds. Oh. 
There are things about me that make me different. Sometimes I stand out in a crowd. Sometimes I'm not seen at all and I feel alone. I start to ask myself, why can't I blend in? Fit the mold. And I'm missing some here. Maybe I'm too little or maybe too much. But when I stop and look, I see nothing in this world is exactly the same. Difference is what my life, what makes life beautiful and miraculous. And when I show who I truly am, I can find my joy, my spark. I have something to contribute. I can't hold back or hold it in. I am someone to be celebrated. I am me. I can have my own style and decide how I want to show up in the world. I can be grateful for my hair, my skin, my size because they are mine. I can be proud of my body and thankful for all that it can do. I can embrace that I'm perfectly imperfect because that is what makes me interesting. I can dance to my own rhythm anytime I want to, move and groove. I know some kids here that like to move and groove. I can learn from others who express themselves with confidence even when it's hard. I can be a role model for someone who is afraid to show their own true colors. I can celebrate the things in this world that I decide are most meaningful to me. I can love anyone I choose fully and completely with my whole heart. I can notice that every creature, small and grand, has something unique and necessary. I can know that community, connection, and acceptance, acceptance exist, and I will find them. I can surround myself with those who see me, stand up for me, and support me. I can be okay knowing that everyone will understand me because I have love for myself. I don't need to hide away, hold back, or compare myself to anyone else because I am me and I matter. You are you, and you matter. We are just right. Beautiful and miraculous exactly as we are. Um, is there no lions cannot fly? And lions can't fly? Well, do you think that story is real? No. 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 The words are, the words are telling you things like you're no. important, you, no. Some but of the books are is a real story. Sometimes books are real stories, and sometimes books are what we call fantasy stories. So things happen like butterflies um, landing on your nose, but that can sometimes happen. Or lions flying. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time for the children's blessing. There are many ways we give to the, to the life of the church, and the monetary offering is just one of these ways. 
Each month, we partner with a local organization and share the money that we collect. If you are here in the sanctuary, we are collecting in the red box that's on the back table. If you're joining us on YouTube, you can head over to our website for more information. Our partner for February is the Coral Arts Society. Um, we do not have the guest, right, Jerry? You haven't seen them come in? Okay. So, excuse me, I'll pull up the, on my phone here. The Coral Arts Society is a choral leader and a key partner in the arts community of Racine. The Coral Arts Society lives out our vision by being a destination for transformational choral experiences, elevating the rich culture of choral singing, performing innovative works of diverse genres, focusing on contemporary composers, both locally and abroad, bringing singers of all ages to choral music through education and outreach. We strive to accomplish our mission through our core values of integrity, mutual respect, collaboration, artistic experience, commitment to community, personal growth, creativity, camaraderie, and diversity. And I think we can expect them hopefully next week to tell you more about it in person. Part of being in community is sharing our joys and sorrows with one another. We do that in many different ways. Sometimes we share them out loud. Sometimes we light candles. Sometimes we share in a completely different ritual. We all experience comfort in sharing and holding one another in different ways. This morning, we are going to light candles while Anna shares some music with us. So please step forward if you would like to light a candle and share a joy or and for joy and concern. We light one final candle for all the joys and sorrows that remain on our hearts. There is a love holding us always. May we rest in that love. Amen and blessed be. All are invited now to join in singing, There is a Love.
If you've never been on the worship kitty, committee, you may not know that our worship team uses something called Soul Matters to help us develop our services. Soul Matters provides a theme each month, a prompt basically, that gives you a place to begin and some other supportive materials to help you develop a service. It is normally very helpful unless you happen to volunteer to lead worship in February of 2023 and the theme they provide you is love. <laughs> love. Having the monthly theme for a Unitarian Universalist church be love seems akin to suggesting to a Christian minister that maybe they should say a word or two about God. Love. It's all we talk about, isn't it? Still, I had volunteered, and so I started turning the idea around in my head. What do I, a fairly new UU, and one of the younger UUs in this congregation, although this year I will be turning 40, have to share about love to a congregation, many of whom have been living and loving as UUs longer than I have even been alive. But I am a child of the 80s, which means I did learn a thing or two about love through the most transcendent medium ever created, the power ballad. And as I turned over the subject of love in my head, the 1984 hit single from Foreigner, I Want to Know What Love Is, kept circulating somewhere in the back of my brain. You may have noticed that Anna played it this morning for the prelude. See, what I found really arresting about the song as it kept replaying in my head is the line that follows, I want to know what love is in the chorus. The singer follows this kind of romantic, earnest plea, I want to know what love is, with the words, I want you to show me. I want you to show me. When we talk about love, the act of being loving, be it familial, romantic, platonic, love of self, love of community, we interpret the concept of what love is and what it looks like based on a set of cultural norms and expectations that we inherit through social osmosis. We learn it through what we see around us. What we often fail to address in our society when we talk about love is who has set the norms, who set the expectations, whose definition of love are we using? The problem with not addressing whose definition of love we're working from is that we've been taught that something that is incredibly individual and nuanced is actually one size fits all. We fail to acknowledge the dominant cultural forces that have shaped our understanding of love and often unintended harm is the result. You can look to something as seemingly innocuous as funeral leave to see how undefined and unexamined expectations of love can create harm. Corporations typically allow for their employees to request leave to attend the funerals of their loved ones, but often with limits on the type of familial relationship based on generalized expectations of closeness. A corporation may approve funeral leave for the death of a sibling, but not for a cousin. This across-the-board policy fails to take into account the individual makeup of familial relationships, but also cultural differences, like the role of kinship in the black community, where the words sibling and cousin may be virtually synonymous. A member of the LGBT community's true family may be made up entirely of found family members, none, sharing none of the traditional bonds of relationship that would be acknowledged with funeral leave. A policy that was meant to be loving is now creating harm, devaluing these relationships because of the particular societal lens that was used when the policy was crafted. True understanding between people is foundational in acting in love and being loving. Thich Nhat Hanh, in Thich Nhat Hanh's book, How to Love, he writes, to love without knowing how to love wounds the person that we love. To know how to love someone, we have to understand them. To understand, we need to listen. Bell Hooks writes in All About Love, embracing a love ethic means that we utilize all the dimensions of love, care, commitment, trust, responsibility, respect, and knowledge in our everyday lives. We can successfully do this only by cultivating awareness. Being aware enables us to critically examine our actions 
to see what is needed so that we can give care, be responsible, show respect, and indicate a willingness to learn. The good news is, I believe that we're in a virtual renaissance right now for opportunities to listen, to learn, and to become better at loving. The rise of social media has allowed many marginalized communities that have never been access, given access to traditional media platforms to create their own. These vibrant online communities allow for connection amongst members, as well as powerful opportunities to learn for people who are outside of those communities, and their success and popularity has led to increasingly diverse offerings of books and other media. As Jess Wilson writes in her blog, A Diary of a Mom, thanks to the wonders of social media, we can, without ever getting up from the couch, break our insular worlds wide open. We can find and amplify the voices that so desperately need to be heard. We can get to know them and follow their stories and begin to understand where they overlap with our own and where they diverge and why. We can become sensitized to the particulars of their struggles. We can celebrate their unique joys. We can revel in the totality of our shared humanity as we work to level the playing field. We can dismantle the one-dimensional characters that we've been fed for so long making space for real, messy, gloriously human beings, live and in technicolor, in front of us in 3D with surround sound. It is not a solution in and of itself, of course. It's a tiny first step. But I have found that connection is fertile soil for understanding. And as it grows and relationships flourish, the weeds of bias and bigotry began, begin to wilt away. With the click of a button, you can find yourself in community with people whose lived experiences differ dramatically from your own. You may learn that love may, might look like not requiring eye contact from an autistic person, that love looks like using the correct pronouns for a transgender person, that love to a, Nat a Native American may not be a land acknowledgement, but the return of the land that was stolen. It is such an opportunity, such a gift to have people show you what love is to them. One thing we need to be cautious of as Unitarian Universalists, people who pride ourselves on being loving, is that sometimes we find ourselves acting from a place of defensiveness when someone tells us that what we thought was love doesn't feel like love to them. We might learn how painful eye contact is to some autistic people after years of insisting on it as a teacher or a parent. We may have mistaken someone's gender identity or used the wrong pronouns. We may have offered a land acknowledgement from a place of allyship only to see it being called performative. These moments can sting because they run counter to how we like to see ourselves. But these moments, whether they happen in virtual spaces on social media, through education we've pursued in books or other media, or person to person are a gift, an opportunity for growth and the restoration of relationship. As Niop Long Jung writes in Calling In, a less disposable way of calling each other accountable, I picture calling in as a practice of pulling folks back who have strayed from us. It means extending ourselves to the reality that we will and do mess up. We stray, and there will always be a chance for us to return. Calling in as a practice of loving each other enough to allow each other to make mistakes, a practice of loving ourselves enough to know that what we're trying to do here is radical unlearning of everything we have configured to believe is normal. If someone has taken the time to educate us, to correct us, to call us in or out, they are making an effort to stay in relationship with us. As John Wellwood writes in Love and Awakening, this kind of unmasking, speaking our truth, sharing our inner struggles, and revealing our raw edges is sacred activity which allows, us, which allows two souls to meet and touch more deeply. 
And that is what I want us to feel most deeply today, is the sacredness of these moments. It is a tremendously vulnerable thing to tell someone when something they are doing is hurting you, especially when what you are saying runs counter to the prevailing social narrative. It opens you up to rejection, gaslighting, defensiveness, outright dismissal, even violence. And in spite of this, there is a tenacious hope that underlies all the education, all the calling in, and that hope is that when we know better, we will do better. Because the truth is, we cannot see the world from every perspective. In order to create loving relationships, we need to be able to listen and learn from each other. Because true love begins with understanding, and it is individual and nuanced as each and every one of us. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. If you will rise in body or spirit and join us in singing hymn number 1029 in the Teal Hymnal, Love Knocks. And this is a new one, so if you can actually read music, the hymnal will, will be helpful to you. Okay, so Anna's going to play it all the way through once as the intro, and then when we get a sense of how it's supposed to sound, we will join her in singing it. Thank you, you may be seated. Our chalice extinguishing words are from Melissa Jeter. We extinguish this chalice today, but we are illuminated by a faith that allows us to sit and think. In this quiet time, we can reflect in solitude, meditating on love and growing out our comfort. Though we experience discomfort, we are excited to birth a new just world. We extinguish our chalice, but not the light of this community. That light cannot be extinguished, for it lives in each of us, reminding us we are connected, held always in a larger love. Within each of our hearts, there is a most glorious light. Go forth and let its spark help you to understand what troubles both you and others. Go forth and let its light of reason be a guide in your decisions. Go forth and bring its ray of hope to those in need of help in both body and spirit that they may find healing. Go forth and fan the flames of passion to help heal our world. Go forth and spread the warm glow of love, pushing back the darkness of the world. Go forth and share your glorious light with the world. 